Yeah. Analytics off the chain, all the channels not the same. Jake and Kyle, you know the name. Headline nation, we running the game. Yo, what is going on, Headliner Nation? It's here, baby. Week one of the NFL season. And just like every single Monday, you will catch me right here on the Fantasy Headliners with your weekly waiver wire show, where I'll talk about a few guys at every position and some quarterbacks and defensive special teams that you could stream throughout the week. Whether you use FAB or the waiver wire process, whatever it may be, I'm going to have guys for you every Monday that you should be looking at adding to your team or streaming for the upcoming matchup. This show every single week is going to be brought to you by our friends over at Fantrax. And we've added a new part to this show. It's our favorite comments from the previous week. That's right. We're going to throw up some of the funny comments that we get in our videos. So feel free, like always, to leave a comment down below. And who knows if you leave a good one, you might be featured in a video. So before we talk about who we are going to be looking at on the waiver wire this week, let's take a quick peek at some of those comments from last week. The first one coming to us from Aaron Barrow, who wanted to let us know he was watching another video from another channel. Notification popped up. Headliners new video. Click and watch. Sorry, other channel. The nation is calling. Aaron does it right. Now, if you're watching other channels, that's absolutely fine. But when the fantasy headliners come up, you should be raring and ready to go. Our next comment, Dustin Evans. Take a drink every time, Kyle says, ladies and gentlemen, and see how fast you end up in the hospital. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't recommend that because you'll probably end up in the hospital very quickly. I love to say, ladies and gentlemen, I want to treat you proper, but I want you also to know that I am talking to you. Dustin, thanks for that comment. David Joan, when a doctor criticizes your handwriting, you got to know you have bad handwriting. LOL. David commenting on our video last week. Show us your teams by Jake and Ethan. Dr. Ethan Turner, next week when y'all put those when y'all put those in for us to take a look at, make sure that your penmanship is perfect if you don't if you don't want to get the fire from Dr. Ethan Turner. And last but not least, Charlie Handsome didn't realize how much you rubbed your hands in videos. I always thought you had your hands in your lap or something. Well, Charlie, let's just be thankful that the only thing I'm rubbing is my hands. All right, maybe that went too far there, but people have been saying they can see my hands in the case behind me, but I can't do anything about it. I can't move anything right now, so it doesn't really matter. But it's time, ladies and gentlemen. We got to jump into it. Got my waiver wire picks here for you. Let's roll, subscribe, and like the video. Starting at the running back position for Houston, David Johnson at 47.2% owned. Going up against Jacksonville this week. Uh, there's been talk about Mark Ingram. There's been talk about Philip Lindsay, but I just feel like that David Johnson is going to get the first shot. And then if it doesn't work, we're going to go other routes with him. So for me personally, going up against Jacksonville in week one could be a pretty juicy matchup for him to kind of get things rolling in the right direction. Sony Michelle from the Los Angeles Rams coming in at 38.4% owned. He gets Chicago this week. What are we going to see? For me personally, if I own Daryl Henderson, I'll grab Sony Michelle and hang on to him. If you're in a really, really deep league, I mean, listen, if you're in eight, 10 team leagues, it doesn't really matter. You're not grabbing Sony Michelle. You might not even grab some of these guys, but if you're in 12, 14, 16, 12 teams with deep benches, if you're in a 10 team with deep benches, maybe a taxi squad, something like that, then you're taking a look at some of these guys. Sony Michelle for me is kind of a pickup only for the Daryl Henderson owners. I'm not giving up on Daryl Henderson. He is, a, he's a better running back than Sony Michelle. I'm just going to throw that out there for you. Sonny Michelle's knees are shot. He is not what he was in college. People keep hanging on to that, and he hasn't done anything. So I'm not interested in Sonny Michelle. But if you're a Henderson owner and you want to be careful, grab him and hold on to him just in case. 
Naheem Hines, the PPR master. If you're in PPR leagues, you should 100% own Naheem Hines. If you're in half PPR leagues, you should also have him. It's like a running back four or five. He can fill in on bye weeks. He can go into the flex if need be. He gets Seattle the first week of the season, 28.3% owned. And let's just let's just call it as it is. Carson Wentz has missed a lot of time in camp. He missed time after an old injury, kind of, kind of flared up a little bit. We thought he was going to be gone for weeks. All of a sudden, nope, he's going to be ready for week one. Oh, all of a sudden, now he's out with COVID. So, I mean, he's been all over. Over the place. So for me, Carson Wentz has been missing a lot of reps. He hasn't been able to have a chance to establish that rapport with everybody yet. We could see him dumping off quite a bit, especially in week one. Naheem Hines is a guy that's going to get quite a bit of touches out of the backfield in terms of targets. Kenneth Gainwell for Philadelphia. It's 17.1% owned going up against Atlanta. Carry on Johnson released. Uh, Jordan Howard released. So now we're going in with obviously Miles Sanders is the RB1. Boston Scott kind of coming up is that RB2 right now. But Kenneth Gainwell could really take over that RB2 slot really quickly. And especially if they don't want to get Miles Sanders a bunch of touches through the air, it's probably going to end up being Kenneth Gainwell at some point this season. We're going up against Atlanta week one. That means it's probably going to be a little bit more of a shootout. These teams are going to go back and forth. Neither of them have really good defenses. Most of the time, they're probably going to be throwing the ball this weekend. We could see Gainwell out there a little bit. Tyson Williams for Baltimore at 5.3% owned. I can't believe he is not more owned at this point. We have seen it with the Ravens' backfield. They're willing to give touch after touch after touch to all of their running backs. Now J.K. Dobbins is out. Gus Edwards steps up. Tyson Williams is the next guy. He is the guy that they're basically saying at this point, it's not Justice Hill, it is Tyson Williams. He is now the RB2 in this offense. And even last year, Gus Edwards at times was getting touches. I mean, over 700 rushing yards. As the basically the RB3, if you really want to quote unquote get sarcastic with me and say Lamar Jackson is the RB1. If not, So Gus Edwards even is the RB2 last season, even with even with Mark Ingram still there last year, was getting plenty of work to be, you know, a flex position if needed. Tyson Williams could easily fall into that this year, and he's only 5.3% owned. Also, they get Las Vegas week one. We could see him get some extra work, especially if that game gets out of hand. Let's move on. Let's go over to the wide receivers now and take a look over there. LaVisca, Chenault Jr. at 45.1% owned going up against Houston. He's the volume hog on this team now. He is going to be the guy that is going to potentially get the most targets on this team. DJ Chark, Marvin Jones, both of those guys are going to be big play guys, but LaVisca Chenault is going to be used all over the field. He's going to be used on wide receiver screens. He's going to be used on some screens out of the backfield. He's going to be used kind of over the middle. Really, for me, LaVisca Chenault being used as kind of a hybrid, kind of a hybrid tight end, wide receiver, running back. He's kind of all over the place. He's big. He's strong. He can knock people down, get yards after the catch. If he gets 100 targets this season, we're going to lock him in as a wide receiver, too. Go grab him right now. Get him on your roster. Marquez Callaway at 35% owned. They get Green Bay in week one. Winston has a deep connection with Marquez Callaway. We've already seen it in the preseason, and I think we're going to see it even more this year. Henry Ruggs at 22.6% owned. I'm taking a little bit of a shot at him first before Brian Edwards. You can throw Brian Edwards into this as well. Brian Edwards even less owned than 22%. You can grab either or right now. The reason I'm kind of bringing Henry Ruggs up before Brian Edwards is because now that John Brown is gone, that's going to open up that those deep targets, those passes down the field that Brown would have ended up taking that now Henry Ruggs is going to have access to. And if they use him in the slot a little bit, allow him to use that speed after the catch. Yes, Brian a Edwards is a guy that I think could end up scoring anywhere between six and nine touchdowns. Maybe he gets double digits, but Henry Ruggs has the highest upside with the potential volume that he could be getting. He can do a little bit more with the volume than what Brian Edwards could potentially do. I really like Edwards, but because the passing game is kind of open down the field now, Ruggs is going to be kind of that first step to see what happens. Nelson Aguilar for New England at 15 points. 3% owned. I was off of him after he had such a great year with Derek Carr in Las Vegas last year. I was really disappointed to see him go to New England. 
Cam Newton being the starter, but then Mac Jones falls into their lap in the draft. Now Cam Newton's released. Mac Jones is the starter. Mac Jones can go down the field better than what Cam Newton can more efficiently now. That's going to open up some targets for Nelson Aguilar, and I'm excited to see if he can form that same connection that he had with Derek Carr last year. Randall Cobb at 13.8% owned for Green Bay, going up against New Orleans. Aaron Rodgers wanted him back. Part of Aaron Rodgers signing the extension he did was getting Randall Cobb back. He told them, go get me Randall Cobb. Bring him back. Aaron Rodgers isn't going to ask for it. Aaron Rodgers isn't going to go on the discount double suck it tour. Not bringing Randall Cobb with him and not utilizing him. A lot of those targets you saw go to Big Bob Tunyon last year are going to go to Randall Cobb. Amon Ra St. Brown for Detroit at 11% owned, going up against San Francisco. The Perryman release, it opens up a lot of opportunities for St. Brown. He's had some good catches in the preseason. He's looked all right at times. I do expect some inconsistencies from him, but if you're looking for a guy that is going to be playing on a team that doesn't have anyone established outside of just their tight end and a banged-up running back, Amon Ra St. Brown could be a guy in the beginning of the season until DeAndre Swift gets healthy that could help you out with some of those catches. Moving on to the toughest position in fantasy football, the tight end position, Gerald Everett at 41.1% owned from Seattle going up against Indianapolis this week. We have talked about Gerald Everett all offseason long. He was a big write-up in the draft guide. We'd have him in other places as well. I'm really hoping that Russell Wilson cooks up some of that connection that he used to have with tight ends in the past. We've seen him take tight ends that nobody knew about and make him fantasy viable some weeks. Gerald Everett's got the skill set. Can it be utilized? Jordan Akins for Houston going up against Jacksonville. He was a guy that I planted my flag on also in the draft guide. And I told you all, he is my breakout guy for this season. He is absolutely a guy that I want to get my hands on because of the way he's utilized in the slot. Last year, he was one of the better tight ends to play out in the slot. I could absolutely see them doing it again with him this year. Tyler Conklin from Minnesota. People are excited about Chris Herndon, and don't you worry, okay? I love myself some Chris Herndon. I thought he was going to be a lot better in New York than what he is, but I'm grabbing Tyler Conklin for right this moment. Irv Smith Jr., done for the year more than likely. I'm grabbing Tyler Conklin because he's been there. He was there last year. He didn't come in a week ago, try to learn the playbook, try to do this. It's going to be Tyler Conklin to start. Maybe Chris Herndon shows up in a few weeks, but it's going to be Tyler Conklin. And last year when Kyle Rudolph missed time, Conklin was the guy that kind of helped step up and he got some work still, even though Irv Smith Jr. was there. And Juwan Johnson from New Orleans at 0.2% owned going up against Green Bay this week. Adam Troutman's injured. Nick Verrett's injured. They're down. They're down to the nitty gritty at the tight end position. Juwan Johnson could be a guy. We're going to keep an eye on him and see if he can make any sort of an impact. Jameis Winston, the starter there. You know Jameis Winston loved his tight ends when he was in Tampa Bay. O.J. Howard, right? Cameron Brait. He looked towards those guys often, and he would connect in the red zone. Maybe Juwan Johnson can be somebody to help you out if you're struggling at the tight end position. Now, it's only week one. You shouldn't be streaming anybody in week one, but we're going to talk about some quarterbacks and defensive special teams that have great matchups this week that if for some reason you needed to use, you would be able to. Let's start at the quarterback position. Matt Ryan for Atlanta at 36% owned, going up against Philadelphia. Again, I mentioned it a couple of minutes ago. This is going to be a high-scoring game, a lot of throwing, a lot of back and forth. Expect Matt Ryan to come out firing in week one. Kirk Cousins from Minnesota going up against Cincinnati, which again, they're, I mean, their team's looking a little bit better. They've worked on the defense a little bit, but they're going to be throwing the ball all over the place. Yes, they'll be running it with Dalvin Cook, but don't, don't, don't even for a second think that Minnesota isn't going to come out and want to put, want to put it to Cincinnati in week one to really start off on the right foot. And then Jimmy Garoppolo for San Francisco, 4.5% owned. I don't care who it is. You're starting them against Detroit. For those of you in like a 2QB league or a Superflex league, 
you could start Jimmy Garoppolo this week and you're probably going to get some decent points. On to defensive special teams. The Denver Broncos at only 22% owned going up against the New York Giants. And then I'm going to skip over one. I'll come back to them in just a second. But then the New York Giants at 6% owned. I'm taking both defenses in this matchup. I'm thinking low scoring affair. Denver with Teddy Bridgewater, New York with uh, Daniel Jones. How's the connection going to feel? Are they going to be able to put up points? Both of these defenses are good. New York, their defense is very underrated. They could give fits to Denver in week one. I definitely could see this game having an under of around 50 points. I could see that maybe even 45. I don't expect a whole lot of points. I expect some turnovers and I expect some shaky play, especially at the very beginning. These defenses are going to be a part of that and then Seattle 26% owned going up against Indianapolis and that was something I mentioned again a little earlier in the video Carson Wentz has not had much time with the team as of late missed some time because of the injury wasn't even supposed to be back then he comes back then he goes on the COVID list he's missed a lot of reps that he really needed with his new teammates he's lost T.Y. Hilton what's going to happen on that offensive line in week one Seattle could be a team to give Indianapolis some fits to start the season. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Again, my waiver wire video for week one. I'm going to be here every single Monday for you. And again, thank you to our friends over at Fantrax for being the sponsors of this video this season. Do me a favor, down below, leave a comment about somebody that you're grabbing off the waiver wire here in week one. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to get out of here to work on start and sit episodes for this week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll catch you all in the next episode of the Fantasy Headliners.